Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon, guys and gals. So I was in the middle of doing something I was going to do anyways, so I thought I might as well bring you all along. I haven't seen uh, very many videos on how to recycle this clear ballistics gel, and honestly, whenever I first started doing it, I, well, the first time I ever did it, I thought, well, that looks easy. It just looks like a big block of jello. You should be able to poke your finger in there and just slice it real easy. It's actually a little more difficult than that. Uh, just the consistency of this gel, like I said, you'd think that you could just poke your finger in it, but it's actually a little tougher than what you would imagine. And just its consistency, like, will grab a knife blade. So when you're trying to cut through it, when both sides are kind of smashing on the side of your blade, it tries to grab that blade, and it, it makes it difficult to cut. So I'm not saying that I'm that this is the best way to do it, this is the best way that I've found out to do it so far. So the objective is, you know, you've got all these wound tracks in this block and you want to melt it down to get rid of that and put it back in form. So you've got to cut it up and put it in this mold. This is the six by six by 16 uh, clear ballistics gel mold right off of their website. You don't spray it with anything, nothing like that. You just chunk, chunk up the block and put it in there. But what I discovered is if you just chunk it up and don't pay any attention to the wound tracks or whatever, you'll get a real smoky block on the second time. So <clears throat> what I've found is if you dissect the block and try to get into the actual wound channels, you can get some of that residue out of the wound channels, take it and wash it off or get the, the burnt material on the inside. Sometimes if it's a real fast round, like rifle rounds or the 10 millimeter round even done it, It'll cause a little combustion inside the block and that'll burn the inside of the block and when you melt it back down, that leaves a big smoky streak inside your block. Y'all remember old Smokies if you watched my earlier videos. But we'll get to hacking on this thing and I'll show you a little bit uh, better view of the consistency of this. Okay, so now you're a little closer. Let me just show you how it really grabs that blade. So, strangely enough, Cutting it this way, standing up like this actually kind of helps me. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you why. I'm gonna start on this end actually, cause it's a big old wound track right here. So I'm gonna cut right down that wound track. So you can see on the end, there's an entry hole, there's an entry hole. So my game plan on this is to try to catch at least two of those. I'm probably gonna lose it as I go down, but it'll make it easier on me to dig those wound tracks out. So. And you can see it doesn't cut easily. So once you get down in there a little bit, about where that blade's fully buried, it, it wants to start grabbing. So the easiest thing for me to do is just kind of spread that wound, that block apart and it'll cut a lot smoother. So just kind of follow your blade, keeping the, the gel off the side of the blade itself so that it'll peel apart. And with it standing on its end like this, once you get about halfway down or so, the weight of the block, you can just kind of lean it and it'll kind of help you itself. And I say that as it jiggles everywhere. So yeah, I totally started missing that wind track. It looks like I got into another one, so that's good. All right, now we've got two. So I can kind of visually examine the block. You can see there's a lot of denim in this track. So I'm gonna to try to get it out with my fingers as best as I can. And then I will take my knife and open up the rest of the way into that wound track. Make sure that I'm all the way through so that I'm able to get everything out of there. And you do the same thing like when you have uh, really high fragmenting uh, rifle rounds you'll kind of do the same thing just to get all the little copper fragments, gel fra or uh, lead fragments, all that stuff out. But this was a pistol round and it did have the denim, so it drags the denim all the way into the block. So you can see I'm starting to get some of this denim out of here. The cleaner you get it doing this process, it's a big old chunk of denim cleaner you get it in this process right here, the better your end product's gonna be. So take your time, 
get as much as you can. And you can even take it and rinse it off if you need to. I'm probably not gonna do that. Just because I'm kinda in a press for time here. So that's about as good as that one's gonna get. So now that that one's good, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find me another wound tract and I'm gonna do the same thing. And you'll see why I kind of use this method here in a minute. I know it looks like it's a hard way going lengthwise like this, but I promise it's not. Try to follow that wound track, keeping the block spread apart. That's the key. If you had three hands, this would be a whole lot easier. Okay, so I cut out that part of the video. I didn't want to make you sit here and watch me just hacking on it. So essentially I travel, I cut right down this wound track right here. I missed it a little bit, so I'm going to take my knife and just kind of open it up. Follow right on that wound track. And same process. I reach in and dig some of that denim out, some of that burnt gel material. Try to get it as clean as possible. Okay. I think that one track's pretty clean. That must have been a full metal, metal jacket or something that didn't expand a whole lot because there's not a lot of denim in that one. This block might have been from that uh, 380 gel test where there wasn't a whole lot of expanding going on with anything. Okay, so I'm looking at this gel block and I can see something in there right here. I don't know if that's gel or if that's lead fragment, but I'm just gonna tear this way That's denim. So a little bit of denim right there. When you cut it, you can't see through it as well wherever you cut it. It makes a big, big white uh, opaque streak. So now this piece is good to go. I'm gonna chunk it in my mold here. Now, so this linear section of block here is pretty clean. These two still need some work. So now I'm gonna show you why I do it in the linear part. And the big reason is I can lay it right here, score that, score that, score that, and then I can just tear it off in a chunk. Just throw it in the mold, tear it off in a chunk, throw it in the mold, and we're good. So I'm not gonna make you sit through watching me cut these pieces up and put them in here. But one thing I do want to say is whenever you uh, start putting your pieces into this mold, it's going to look like you have too much gel. You're not going to be able to fit it all in there the first time. And it don't matter how small you cut the chunks, how large you cut the chunks, how you try to fit them in there like Tetris pieces, it doesn't matter. You always end up with it sticking above the top. And I learned the hard way, if there's any sticking above the top and you put it in the oven and start melting it down, it will overflow around the sides and you'll end up with smoky kitchen from the gel coming out onto the burner. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these blocks, get them chunked up, and then we'll go from there. All right guys, so that's about as full as I wanna get this mold. So you can see it's not really, a little bit sticking above, but I don't think I'm gonna get much uh, dripping over the pan. Now, this is the Gun Dungeon Kitchen. This isn't my wife's kitchen. So luckily I'm fortunate enough to actually have my own oven to do this kind of stuff. But I will warn you, when you're melting this stuff down in the oven, it will get a little smoky and you will get some different smells coming of it. So your wife might not appreciate it too much. So I'm gonna start this at 255. 250 is about what you want, 250, 255. Got my rack all the way in the lower part. We'll stick this in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that in. Let me adjust this camera. So what I'm gonna do is I've got it in the oven now. I'm gonna set my alarm for one hour. And whenever I get back from the one hour, should be able to put some more. Mm, now I gotta wash that. But I should be able to put some more of these in. This is what was left over from that block. So it looks like quite a bit, but like I said, it's really, really tough to get it all in there on the first try. 
So, yeah, and matter of fact, now that I've, I've dropped that piece, brings up another point. You want to make sure that your counters, your tables, and everything is free of lint and hair or whatever may be laying on the tables. Give it a good wipe down before you lay this gel on because this stuff will pick up everything. The piece I just dropped in the floor, I'm going to go ahead and run it under the sink, wash it off real good, and make sure I'm not getting that into my block. All right, guys, it has been one hour. You can see that it has shrank down into the mold quite a bit. You can see it's starting to melt pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and stick some of these other chunks in here. So there we go. I believe I'm good to go for now. So now I will set the alarm for five more hours and we'll check it after five more hours. And this is the four hour mark. So as you can see, we're getting pretty close. See the smoke rolling out there guys. So yeah, there, there is a little bit of smoke comes with this. Uh, we can all probably, I mean, it's probably almost good actually, but we're going to give it another hour just because that's what we're supposed to do. We'll come back in an hour. All right, here we are. We are finished. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take this little, first off, I'm going to turn the oven off. Hang on. All right, oven is off. And I'm going to take this kitchen knife sharpener and just kind of touch those little bubbles on the surface. It'll get rid of the big bubbles. You won't get them all. There'll be a few small ones there. But it's not really a big deal. So as you can see, they come out pretty good. Just got to tap them. We're about finished, guys. Uh, we've got about 12 hours to wait for this to solidify. So that's all the bubbles I'm gonna try to get out. So I'm gonna turn, the, well, the oven's off. I'm gonna leave the door open, let it set like this for 12 hours. I'll see you all in the morning. All right, so it's the next morning. Completely solidified. Take a look. Check that out. Looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna set this here. Get the camera closer. Show you the process. Start getting this gel out of the mold, which can be a task in itself. So the best way I figured out to do this is to kind of take your hand and break apart the seal all the way around this block and you can kind of see see that white there that line start to form it's breaking apart so just kind of do that all the way around the block just get as much of it as you can broke loose and i actually leave it just like this on its end and then i'll start rolling it out from one end and i might, I might block the view here because it does take a little effort but I just kind of pull it down on the top. Try to get my hand in there. You really got to be kind of aggressive with it. So it's starting to come out now. And once it starts, it will pop out. So there we go. There's our clear ballistics gel from start to finish. Hopefully y'all do a little better cleaning it than I did. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, stay tuned.